Welcome to Layer Groups for After Effects script plugin. Um, when you load it up, you get this info page showing you what each button does and what the modifier keys do, the shift key. Okay, and you can tick this to get rid of it. Okay, so get rid of it. It loads here on the left hand side. You can dock it anywhere in your interface. If I drag here, you can see that it can go uh, like a row instead of a column. Um, you can have little names under the buttons. I've disabled it here. It's in settings. Um, you can see the image there as, as the guide. Um, you can pause the video here to check out the different settings which require a restart. Okay, so I'm going to run through the buttons and show you exactly what it does. This is now CC compatible. Um, the look of the buttons is uh, like After Effects. So I have a group made here and you can see the hierarchy. Okay. So what I'm going to do is first of all delete that and show you how I made it. So I have all these star layers, so you simply select the layers you want to group. There's your button and we'll call it, uh, sorry, stars. Click return and all the layers are sucked into that group. Okay. I'm going to control Z that or undo that. So you can see up here there's an undo per function. Um, so everything that you do you can just step backwards. If I hold down shift this time and click it um, and make a new group, all these layers are parented to the group. Okay, so what that means if I rotate the group, all the sub layers rotate. We now have an option that the group master can be at the center of the comp or the average center of the layers. It's the same in this instance, but um, you can find that option in settings and you can switch that, restart, and Okay, these are obviously to expand and contract the group. You can see that the groups are, uh, when you make a group, that they're color coded. So if I, um, oops, if I just duplicate that group, uh, you can see the next one is pink and so on and so forth. All right, I'm gonna control Z, undo that, and go back to one group, okay? So these are layer group visibility. So if I expand that so you can see what's going on. Um, that's obviously to hide the group. That's to show the group. Now say that some of these were tracking mats uh, within a group or something like that. Um, now if you hide the group, when you reveal the group, it remembers child layer visibility. So these guys aren't shown. Um, okay, so I'll demonstrate that again. Hide the group, show the group these guys remain invisible okay um, all these work across multiple groups by the way okay so I'm just gonna duplicate that group a couple of times now if I hold down shift on the expand and contract so shift and contract it contracts all groups in your timeline um, Okay, uh, so we'll demonstrate that again. So expand all, collapse all. Okay, now delete a uh, group. Okay, so if I delete the group, delete the group and it pops all the content layers out. Okay, going to undo that. Um, delete group and contents, does what it says. Okay, a quick shortcut with this is if I hold down shift, it's going to delete group and contents. So you don't need to have that sub window. Okay, just deletes it. Okay. This button is to duplicate a group. Um, with duplication, it retains the parenting, the relative parenting intact. So what I mean by that is maybe this top layer here, I parent to the group. The second layer, I parent to something not in the group and the third layer I parent to maybe the bottom layer in the group. Now when I select the group and I simply click that, I duplicate it, but it has, um, has it's copied all the parenting uh, relatively to the new group. So this first layer, as you can see, is parented to its own um, group. Uh, the second one is uh, parented to this layer that's not in any group. And the third one is parented to the bottom layer in the new group. So, um, that's duplication. All right, so I'm going to expand that guy again. Now, um, we're going to add this layer to this group. You just click Add to Group and brings it in, renames it, okay? 
Um, we're going to take that out of the group by pressing this button. Okay, so it's taken it out of the group. Now I want to bring it back into the group, but I'm going to hold down shift this time and click add to group. And what it's done, if I reveal parenting, is it has automatically parented it to the group. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just get rid of it out of the group for the time being. Okay, so this is rename group. So we'll go back to the name stars, click return. So this tells all the child layers uh, that they belong to this group name. Okay. Um, now we move on to group mats. So I have a mat prepared up here. So I'll just solo it. See on the right it's a solid layer and I've just dr drawn a good few mats on it. So mats um, work with uh, the alpha channel of a layer. Okay. So I'm going to, you can see both layers there, so I'm going to use this mat layer to mat the uh, stars group, okay? So you select your mat, doesn't matter if this is expanded or contracted, okay? Select the mat and the group and click uh, layer mat and you can see it's been matted through here. So if I just turn on the alpha, you can see the story there, okay? I'm going to shift expand. Um, you can see that the mat has been dropped into the group. It's not visible, it doesn't need to be visible because how this works is it drops a mat effect on each layer in the group. Um, so all these layers will track that layer for its alpha information. So you don't need to show it. The good thing about that is you're not silhouetting alpha um, or silhouetting lumas or using tracking mats and that so it means you can have multiple groups and the layers very specifically track uh, their own mat layer in the group and then of course you can go into this mat layer uh, so for instance if I move the mat up or down you can see the effect on the right hand side of the screen okay um, or also you can go into that pre-comp and do what you need to do Okay, so we'll go back here. Now, if I hold down shift and I click group mat, we have some different options here. We can invert the mat. Okay, so you can see it's swapped it there. Hold down shift again. You can switch between alpha and luminance. So what that's actually doing is it's changing the set mat effect on every one of the layers that is in group stars. Okay. And then finally, as you would expect, there is delete group mat. So that removes all the mat effect from the layers, throws the mat out. It doesn't delete automatically because you might need that layer for something else. Okay, so there we go. So I'm just going to uh, duplicate that group a few times and shift contract all those groups. Okay, now we move on to baking. So this little icon here, this is simply to convert your groups into pre-comps. You just click that button and your groups become pre-comps. Okay, so as simple as that, we're back here. Now, if I shift click this button, it's going to un-pre-comp or un-bake those layers. So it's deleted the pre-comp and brought back my layers. So I'm going to shift un-bake here and shift un-bake here as well. So you can swap between pre-comps and um, having the layers in your comp. And then we can put these back in a group if we wish. Um, new stars. Okay. And I'm just going to delete those layers. Okay, there are some new functions and I've put them in this more menu. Um, these functions you mightn't use too often, but they're there if you need them. Okay, so the first one would be select children, so that selects the children of uh, the group. I'll just show you again, select children. Selects the children, might be useful if you have a lot of groups and you just want a quick way to select all. Okay, and um, what else have we here? Toggle tagging of groups. Um, so you select the group and 
talk about tagging. So it just puts a tag on all the child areas to show what they belong to. Um, this can be a default setting as well in settings that you can set if you want it on by default. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Trim groups to in and outs of the child areas. If I click that, um, you can see the effect that it just trims to the in and out. Um, that also can be a default in settings if you want to check that out. Um, make all expression friendly. Um, these layers are expression friendly because there's no unusual characters in them. Um, but this little pointer thing um, it can cause problems with expression. So you can uh, uh, click that and it changes it to a V. This is also in settings if you want this on by default. Um, this may help you uh, with your expressions if you want to use the group layer with expressions. Okay. Um, what else have I? Um, show how many child layers. Puts a little tag here and just does uh, count how many child layers. Okay. So there's a few few other things that might be of use. Uh, another little one to point out is when you are making a new group. Um, there's a secret button here down the right hand side so if I click that this is for default dialogue position so you can have your dialogue pop up exactly where you want um, it's probably useful to have a pop up right beside um, your toolbar wherever you dock it you know so I'm gonna cancel that but when I click any of these buttons again my dialogue is always going to pop up here so this was um, based on a user request okay so I'm going to move down to this button which is stacking first of all if I hold down shift it turns on and off that little green light that little green light means uh, auto stacking so I'll turn it off first to explain what it is stacking so this is the stack order of your layers so you can't drag and drop layers into groups like in Photoshop. So this is what we do. Okay, so I'm going to shift contract all the groups. So this layer, I'm going to just drag up to here and you would expect that it's between these two groups, but it actually isn't. The index is layer two. So if I expand everything, you see that it appears to be in group second. Okay, so how do we deal with this? We click uh, the stacking button okay and you can see now this layer is truly between these two groups okay um, stacking sends all layers that belong to a particular group uh, to that group okay so if you're working away and maybe things are getting messy um, you can just click that button and it'll send everything home to where it should be okay um, so if you don't want to be clicking that button and you want to have layer groups um, look after these layers in the background, you shift click this and auto stacking is on. So if I'm working away and maybe add a few solids here and maybe, have, you know, maybe I'm just working away and then as I make a new group here, watch what happens in the background. Okay, so I made my group and then it moved the solids out of the first group and on top of the second group, just so the um, paradigm of having layer groups in your timeline makes sense. Okay, so it's as if this is clicked. So even when you uh, expand and contract a group, um, it's going to stack all your layers in the correct order just to keep things tidy and organized. Okay. So that's stacking. As a late addition to layer groups, I've now included a script called Isolate. Isolate is a separate product and has a separate page on AE scripts you might want to check out and has a more detailed video. Um, but it's quite complementary and related to layer groups in terms of keeping your timeline tidy and focusing on something. So I've decided to um, just um, add it to layer groups. Um, so it, it works with it, but you can think of it as a little bit separate from the rest of the uh, functions in layer groups. So I, I have a comp here with, I think, 200 layers. So the idea is, um, it's if you want to isolate one layer, you just 
click it, you go to work on that layer, whatever you need to do. It adds a bug to the comp to go into isolate mode, so it mimics a lot of um, other software. For instance, I use Softimage and you know a lot of 3D software has an isolate and unisolate function that you pop in and out of constantly. So I always thought this was a function missing from After Effects and um, that's why it's here. So the button is highlighted when you're in that mode. Um, you can see that Alt and Shift um, provide additional functions. You click it again to unisolate and it goes back. Um, layer Groups uses your comments field so you can see what happens when you go into isolation. It adds um, something to your comment field uh, while it's in isolation and then it gets rid of it when you're finished. So it shouldn't affect um, how your grouping structure works or if you have uh, comments on any layers for any other purpose. Um, also, uh, very quickly, if you hold down shift, you can isolate by colors. You can select all the green layers and just isolate them um, and then can see that's reflected in the bug up here and then click it again to go back to normal um, so it's complementary to layer groups and that's pretty much it I hope it um, is of use to you and um, thanks for listening